Uh, this morning, we have already had the opportunity to hear the word preached in a number of different uh, settings. We hear the word being preached in song. We hear the word being preached in prayer. We hear the word being preached in the testimony of our young people. We hear the word being preached in the installation of office bearers. And so we have already been, if we were paying attention and listening to the leading of the Spirit, we have already been richly filled this morning. And so this morning's message is going to be brief, but I hope it will encapsulate all that has gone on before. And so I would in turn, uh, I would invite you, excuse me, to turn with me to Acts chapter 11, Acts chapter 11 verses 1 to 8, or to follow along on the screen behind me. This is a famous, famous story within the, the story of Acts. And it is absolutely significant for so many different reasons. And along with that, there are a variety of different interpretations that we have about how this passage ought to be uh, received. And I would, uh, I would say that in some cases, this is sort of a both-and kind of situation where it can be uh, listened to and understood in two at least two different ways but uh this has particular application to us this morning and so listen to the words of the lord the apostles and the believers throughout the uh throughout judea heard that the gentiles also had received the word of god uh keeping in mind that uh, Jewish people, uh, they considered it to be that there were Jewish people and then there was everybody else. And everybody else were Gentiles, right? So you were either Jewish or Gentile, uh, which would mean that probably most of us would be Gentile, right? So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. And that was in Jewish custom and law, that was a big no-no. Those who were circumcised, who were of the Jewish faith, who were circumcised, were clean, right? They were cleansed by God and through the law and through the priests and the sacrificial system and so on and so forth. Um, and people who were outside of that were unclean. The Gentiles were unclean, right? Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds. Then I heard a voice telling me, get up. Peter, kill and eat. I replied, surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. Right Now, keeping in mind, the animals and creatures, the creatures that are seen in this sheet are not just any animals. They are animals that would have been considered not acceptable for uh, Jewish folk to eat. For example, let's say pigs. Uh, pig was not a, 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 a meat they were supposed to eat. So this is what Peter, who is a devout follower of Jesus, but also a devout Jewish person, would have seen in this sheet unclean animals that he should not eat, that if he ate would make him unclean. Right? And so he says, surely not, Lord, nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up into heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. Caesarea was a Roman city within uh, Israel that was, that was uh, largely populated with Gentiles. The Spirit told me to have no hes hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. 
He told us how he had seen an angel appear in the house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said, John baptized with water. Um, Sorry, lost my spot. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift He gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could, uh, excuse me, that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, even to the Gentiles, God has left granted repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Amen. Well, their keynote speaker at All Ontario Youth uh, Convention, what's her name? Pastor Carmen Bookma. Uh, one of the themes that sort of runs through her life and her ministry uh, as she testified on, on their website, was this idea of our identity in Christ. Who are we because of Jesus? And this passage here is, is a huge breakthrough for us in terms of who we are in Jesus Christ. Now, now Peter didn't really know this. He didn't really realize this before this moment. But the reality of who we are in Christ had already been established when Jesus came and walked and talked and lived and died and rose again for us. That had already established the identity, but, but Peter didn't get it yet. Peter was still you know, sort of thinking in terms of, well, the gospel that Jesus gave us, even though Jesus told him that he would go into Judea and Samaria and to the whole world, to preach the gospel, he, he didn't quite get it. He was thinking that he was going to be preaching to the Jewish people all over the world and that they would come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Jewish Messiah. And, and it's not because Peter you know, hated Gentile people or anything like that. This was just the context that he had been raised in, that, that Jesus the Messiah was going to be and for the people of Israel who had been set apart by God as a holy people, it was, it was just normal that, that they would be the ones to receive the Messiah. And then the whole world would hopefully see that, but it wasn't necessarily that this was going to be particularly applicable to them. And in fact, throughout the New Testament church, we see that time and again, little little disruptions, even big disruptions, where where Jewish folk within the church have trouble with the Gentile folk who come into the church. In fact, you notice that that at the beginning of this little story, the believers in Jerusalem they yell at Peter for sitting down and eating with Gentiles, right? Because that they weren't supposed to do that. And yet later on, after this has been resolved and it says they had no more questions, right? You'd think that Peter would have learned his lesson. But later on, the Apostle Paul has to travel all the way to Jerusalem for the Jerusalem Council. And during that time, he has to yell at Peter because Peter has gone back to no longer eating with the Gentiles. He's like, what is wrong with you? You should have gotten... Whom you cannot eat. And you think this would have been fairly obvious from the way that Jesus ministered. Because who did Jesus eat with? On the who did Jesus eat with? Prostitutes, lepers, tax collectors, the worst of the bunch. <laughs> he ate with the unclean people all the time. Right? He even sat down and had a chat with a Samaritan woman who was unclean all by herself, but then who had also been married multiple times and 
was living with the guy she was living with, right? Unclean, right? It's like, you know, in, in leper, when lepers were in, in, in that day, they had to stay in their leper colony away from everybody else because their disease made them unclean. And if they had to come into town or be anywhere near people, they had to walk around going, unclean, unclean, so that people could avoid them because they were not clean. And the truth is that sometimes we walk around like that. It's like we have looked at ourselves and judged ourselves to be unclean. Look at me. I am a pathetic lump that God could not possibly love. I am unworthy and unclean. Or, alternatively, or maybe at the same time, we look around at people around us and we say, oh, they're unclean, effectively. Their, their politics are wrong. Their belief system is wrong. Their lifestyle is wrong. Their orientation is wrong. Their cultural background is wrong. Their, I don't know, whatever it is, it's wrong. And, and we shouldn't, they're unclean. But notice something incredibly important here. Not only does God provide this vision for Peter of these animals who are unclean in Jewish tradition and, and law, but also He makes it very clear that these people are not unclean even before they have received the Gospel. Wait a second, that's weird. Right? Jesus, remember, Jesus ate with all of these people before they received the gospel. He didn't say to them, uh uh, no way, you're unclean, I can't eat with you. No, no, he ate with them. So then when 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 Peter receives this vision, right? <clears throat> when Peter receives this vision, then he has this gentleman come to him and say, Hey, wait, I was supposed to go and call for you. And then Peter goes to their house and he preaches them, the, preaches to them the good news. And then they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they believe. Then they become followers of Jesus Christ. And so God says to them, they are not unclean. They, they surely need to know the good news. They surely need to come to know who I am and what I have done for them. But they are not unclean. And, and so too, it is true for us. Right? We don't put elders and deacons into office because they are perfect. Right? But we do know that they have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Oh, I almost lost my head. Are we still on? Yeah? Okay. Right? We do know that they've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And that even before they received Jesus as their Savior, God had done something special in their lives so that we who were clean could eat with them who had not yet received Jesus Christ. And so too it is with the youth around us, rebellious as they may be. <clears throat> We can eat with them and love them and care for them even if they haven't accepted Jesus yet. And then when the Gospel comes into their lives and they receive the Word of God and they believe, then they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they are part of us. Our family. And so it is with the people around us in Athens and the surrounding area. We shouldn't walk around and go, oh, those people are unclean in, in, in our hearts. And, and the same with you and I. In fact, even more with you and I. Because we have already received the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We are already followers of Jesus Christ. So not only were we redeemed in Jesus' blood, but before that we were also made 
tolerable for God to sit with and eat with through His miraculous work. And now, now we can't walk around pointing at ourselves and saying, I'm not worthy. God could never love me. What I have done is too terrible, too awful, too horrendous. That is insulting and arrogant. It is insulting and arrogant to God. Because in effect, we are saying that our judgment of ourselves or others is better than God's judgment of them or us. And who on earth are you? Who am I to say that my judgment of myself or anyone else could be better than God? Brothers and sisters, this is why. This is why we eat and drink and have fellowship with whomever, whenever, wherever. We do so in the name of the Lord because, because what God has made clean, we should not call unclean. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so very much that though we are completely unworthy, though we are in ourselves not deserving, you have declared us clean. You have made us clean, O God. And even, even before we received the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ, somehow you made it so that your son, Jesus Christ, the very reality of purity and holiness and righteousness could tolerate eating and drinking and being in our presence. Oh God, it is miraculous in our sight that You have not washed us away as humanity, but as have instead in Your mercy offered cleansing Lord God, help us. Help us to abide by Your judgment that says we should not call unclean what You have made clean. We pray this in Jesus' name.